In today's exciting lesson, we'll dive into an engaging news article about the blockbuster film Barbie and the fascinating world of merchandising that surrounds it. As always, we'll explore key vocabulary words and phrases from the article, break down their meanings, provide you with real-life contextual understanding, and equip you with example sentences to boost your English proficiency. Now, if you're ready, let's get started. First, let's read the headline. Barbie is a hit and all kinds of businesses are hopping on the bandwagon. Now, what does hopping on the bandwagon actually mean? Now, this refers to the act of joining or participating in a trend, movement, or activity that has gained popularity or momentum, often to take advantage of its current popularity. Now, in the article, hopping on the bandwagon describes the action of marketers and retailers embracing the popularity of the Barbie film and associated merchandise. They do this by incorporating Barbie-themed products into their offerings to capitalize on the widespread attention the movie and its related items are receiving. We can also use it this way. With a sudden surge of sustainable products, many companies are hopping on the bandwagon by introducing eco-friendly alternatives to their conventional offerings. Here's another example. When the new social media platform gained massive popularity, even celebrities started hopping on the bandwagon to create profiles and connect with their fans. Here's another one. The restaurant decided to hop on the vegan food bandwagon by adding plant-based options to their menu, catering to the growing number of health-conscious customers. Now let's hear how others use this in a sentence. The trouble with those people is they jump on the bandwagon. What? Let's move on to the first paragraph. Try to read along with me so you can practice your pronunciation. Now let's start. During its first few days in theaters, Barbie raked in $337 million globally in the box office. The largest opening weekend of 2023 so far. But even before the numbers came in, Barbie was a merchandising hit. The film had been gathering hype for months thanks to a star-studded cast, beloved director, dazzling aesthetic, and seemingly endless array of Barbie-themed merchandise. Two, raked in. Raked in is a phrasal verb that means to earn or accumulate a large amount of something, usually money, profits, or rewards. It's often used informally to indicate a significant gain. We can conjugate it this way. For present tense, rake in, past, raked in, present participle, raking in, past participle, raked in. Now let's look at it again. During its first few days in theaters, Barbie raked in $337 million globally in the box office the largest opening weekend of 2023 so far. Now in the article, raked in is used to describe the impressive amount of money earned by the film Barbie during its opening weekend at the box office. It emphasizes the substantial financial success of the movie. Here are other examples. The charity event raked in over $50,000, which will be used to support underprivileged children in the community. Here's another example. The new product launch exceeded all expectations, raking in unprecedented sales figures within the first week. Here's another one. The online store rakes in profits by offering exclusive deals and discounts to its loyal customers. Now let's hear how others use this. In a sentence. And I think of all the money they're raking in. Three, merchandising hit. Merchandising hit is a noun phrase and it refers to a product, brand, or associated items that experience remarkable success in terms of sales and consumer interest. It indicates that the merchandise is in high demand and generates substantial revenue. Now let's look at it again. But even before the numbers came in, Barbie was a merchandising hit. 
In the article, merchandising hit is used to describe the widespread popularity and commercial success of products related to the film Barbie. It signifies that the Barbie-themed merchandise has been exponentially well-received and is driving significant sales. We can also use it this way. The new fashion collection featuring iconic movie characters became a merchandising hit, attracting fashion enthusiast worldwide. Here are other examples. The innovative gadgets launch turned out to be a merchandising hit, quickly selling out in stores across the country. Here's another one. The collaboration between the renowned artist and the band resulted in a merchandising hit with the limited edition items flying off the shelves in no time. Four, hype. Hype is a noun that refers to excessive or exaggerated promotion, experiment, or attention given to something, often to create anticipation or boost its popularity. Now in the article, it says, the film had been generating hype for months. In the article, hype is used to describe the excitement and anticipation generated around the film Barbie. The term emphasizes the heightened level of attention and promotion that contributed to the movie's buzz and popularity. We can also use it this way. The company's marketing team created a lot of hype around the product launch, leading to long lines of eager customers waiting outside the store. Here's another example. The concert lived up to the hype, delivering an electrifying performance that left the audience in awe. Here's another one. The social media campaign generated massive hype for the upcoming book release, resulting in thousands of pre-orders within a few days. Number five, star-studded cast. Star-studded cast is a noun phrase that refers to a group of actors in a film play or performance consisting of well-known and highly regarded individuals who have achieved fame or celebrity status. Now in the article it says the film had been generating hype for months thanks to a star-studded cast, beloved director, dazzling aesthetic. Now in the article Star-studded cast describes the lineup of accomplished and famous actors featured in the film. This term emphasizes the impressive and prestigious nature of the ensemble, contributing to the movie's appeal. Here are some more examples. The highly anticipated movie boasts a star-studded cast, including award-winning actors and actresses from around the world. Here are some more examples. The success of the play can be attributed to its star-studded cast who brought their exceptional talents to the stage. The film festival showcased several movies with star-studded cast drawing the attention of critics. Now let's hear how others use this in a sentence. I'm sure that you'll be with us for our star-studded spectacular event. Six, Barbie-themed merchandise. Barbie-themed merchandise is a noun phrase. Barbie-themed serves as an adjective descri describing the type of merchandise. In the article, Barbie-themed merchandise refers to products that are created with designs, logos, or themes related to the iconic Barbie doll and her world. These products are associated with the film Barbie and are likely to include items like toys, clothing, accessories, and more. Here are some examples. The store's shelves are filled with a wide range of Barbie-themed merchandise, including dolls, clothing, and home decor. Here are some more examples. The popularity of the movie led to a surge in demand for Barbie-themed merchandise, with fans eager to own a piece of the film's magic. Here's another one. The online store offers an exclusive collection of Barbie-themed merchandise attracting both collectors and enthusiasts alike. Now, now let's move on to the second paragraph. 
in the spring when Barbie memes started leaving their glittery trail across the internet, the team at Wonder Garden, a beer garden and event space in Washington, D.C. started to take notice. Around the time, it started planning Barbie parties, celebrations with themed cocktails, pink food, and plenty of opportunities to show off Barbie core outfits. In the Instagram-friendly venue, including life-sized hot pink Barbie and Ken boxes. 7. Leaving their glittery trail. This is a verb phrase. Leaving is the verb, there is a possessive pronoun, and glittery is an adjective describing the type of trail, and trail of course is a noun, indicating a part or marks left behind. Now, since this is a verb phrase, you can conjugate it to present tense, leave their glittery trail, past, left their glittery trail, present participle, leaving their glittery trail, past participle, left their glittery trail. Now let's read it again. In the spring, when Barbie memes started leaving their glittery trail across the internet, the team at Wonder Garden, a beer garden and an event space in Washington, D.C. started to take notice. Now in the article, leaving their glittery trail is used to metaphorically to describe the widespread and noticeable presence of Barbie-related memes across the internet. The phrase conveys the idea that these memes are making a noticeable impact similar to a trail of sparkling glitter. Now here are some more examples. The artist's vibrant murals left her glittery trail throughout the city, adding a touch of color and artistry to every corner. Here are some more examples. The fashion influencers' unique style choices are leaving their glittery trail on social media inspiring countless followers to experiment with the bold fashion statements. Here's another one. As the band embarked on their world tour, they left their glittery trail of unforgettable music performances in every city they visited. Eight, barbiecore outfits. Now this is a noun phrase. Barbiecore is a compound adjective where Barbie refers to the iconic doll and core implies a central or essential aspect. Outfits is the plural form of outfit, which refers to a coordinated set of clothing. Now, in the article, Barbie Outfits describes clothing ensembles that are inspired by the distinctive and glamorous style associated with the Barbie doll. These outfits likely incorporate elements that capture the essence of Barbie fashion and aesthetic. We can also use it this way. The fashion event showcased a variety of Barbie core outfits featuring bold colors, sparkling accessories, and playful designs. Here are some more examples. Many attendees at the party embraced the theme of donning Barbie core outfits, creating a visually stunning and vibrant atmosphere. Here's another one. The fashion influencer's latest video tutorial teaches viewers how to create their own Barbie core outfits complete with tips on makeup and styling. Now let's read the third paragraph. The Barbie brand is particularly powerful because it appeals to multiple generations. By marketing Barbie products to adults, large retailers may be able to get them to buy similar products for their kids. Parents or possibly other family members will gatekeep on whether this product comes in. She said, with Barbie products that appeal to grown-ups, marketers are getting that interactivity between adults and children, that bonding, which can also be used as a selling point. Number nine, appeals to. Appeals to is a verb phrase. Appeals is the verb and to is a preposition. Now this can be conjugated to, uh, present tense, appeal to, past, appeal to, Present participle, appealing to, and past participle, appealed to. Now, in the article, it says, the Barbie brand is particularly powerful because it appeals to multiple generations. Now, in the article, appeals to is used to describe the ability of the Barbie brand to attract and interest multiple generations of consumers. It indicates that the brand's features and characteristics are appealing 
and cultivating to a wide range of people. Now here are some examples. The new video game appeals to players of all ages, offering engaging gameplay and challenges for both children and adults. Here are some more examples. The charity's mission appeals to compassionate individuals who want to make a positive impact on their community. Here's another one. The resort's luxurious amenities and stunning views appeal to travelers seeking a truly indulgent vacation experience. Now let's hear how others use this in a sentence. Peace and quiet appeals to me, Lieutenant. 10. Gatekeep. Gatekeep is a verb. It means to control or limit access to something, often based on certain criteria or standards. In this context, it refers to the action of deciding whether a product or item is suitable for a particular group. We can conjugate the word this way. For present tense, gatekeep. Past, gatekept. Present participle, gatekeeping. Past participle, gatekept. In the article, gatekeep is used in the context of how parents or family members might decide whether a particular product is appropriate for their children. It describes the process of determining whether a product is allowed or not based on their judgment. We can also use gatekeep this way. Some online communities have a tendency to gatekeep certain hobbies, making it difficult for newcomers to join and participate. Here are some more examples. The editor gatekept which articles would be published in the magazine, ensuring they aligned with the publication's editorial standards. Here's another one. The teacher explained that she didn't want to gatekeep the classroom discussions, encouraging all students to freely express their opinions. 11. Selling point. Selling point is a noun phrase. Selling is the gerund form of the verb sell, and point is a noun indicating a feature or aspect of a product that makes it attractive to potential buyers. Now in the article, selling point refers to a unique feature of characteristic of a product that is highlighted to attract customers. It's something that sets the product apart from others and convinces potential buyers of its value. Now here are some more examples. The smartphone's exceptional camera quality became its main selling point, appealing to photography enthusiasts. Here are some more examples. The energy efficient design of the new appliance is a major selling point for environmentally conscious consumers. Here's another one. The convenient location of the hotel Near popular attraction serves as a key selling point for travelers seeking easy access to sightseeing opportunities. Now let's hear how others use this in a sentence. If you're talking about retirement bungalows, that's not a selling point. Now let's read the last paragraph. But while there have been calls to boycott the film, they don't seem to have gotten much traction. Now, with everything coming up Barbie, marketers may lose out by staying away. I think there is a risk of not doing it, Relb Stein said. If you happen to be a retailer and you see the other retailers doing it, you sort of feel like you need to be on the bandwagon and not miss whatever Barbie wave there might be. At this stage, that may mean using the success of Barbie to market pre-existing hot pink products. Twelve. Boycott. Boycott is a verb. It means to refuse to buy, use, or participate in something as a form of protest or to express disapproval. It can also be used as a noun to refer to the act of boycotting. We can conjugate it this way. For example, present tense, boycott, past, boycotted. Present participle, boycotting, past participle, boycotted. Now, in the article, boycott refers to the call for people to abstain from engaging with or supporting the film Barbie as a way of expressing their dissent or disagreement with the content or message of the movie. Now, we can also use it this way. The community decided to boycott the band due to its unethical practices sending a message about the importance of responsible business conduct. 
Here are some more examples. The environmental activists are urging consumers to boycott products with excessive packaging to encourage companies to adopt more sustainable practices. Here's another one. Some moviegoers chose to boycott the film after learning about its controversial themes, showcasing their disagreement through their absence at the theater. Now let's hear how others use this in a sentence. She's telling women to boycott Wilson in the next election. 13. They don't seem to have gotten much traction. Now in the article, this phrase describes the lack of significant response or influence that the calls to boycott the film Barbie have generated. It suggests that the efforts to discourage support for the film have not gained substantial attention or impact. For example, despite their efforts, the protests didn't seem to have gotten much traction and the issue remained largely unnoticed. Here are some more examples. The social media campaign aimed at raising awareness about the cause didn't seem to have gotten much traction, only a few people engaging in the post. Here's another one. The new product launch didn't seem to have gotten much traction in the market as sales remained stagnant despite excessive marketing efforts. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for learning English with me. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to connect with me on all my other social media accounts. I have my Facebook and my Instagram. And thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.